Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I wanted to get on today and talk about relationship burnout and the question of who am I without the other person? And the reason that I think this is such an important question is because I feel like a lot of times people get lost in their relationships. They lose themselves in relationships. And as a result, they actually become less attractive to their partner. And I want you to think about that. Um, think about when you're most attracted to your partner. It's often when we see them in relationships with other people and how other people respond to them. We love seeing them in their element and when they're most confident. We love seeing them and are attracted to them when they're passionate about something and when they're expressing that passion. So what happens when we lose ourselves in our relationship? We not only give ourselves over completely to the relationship, um, and then if, you know, if things don't work out, we have to sort of pick ourselves back up at the end of that and try to find ourselves again. Or we stick with the relationship and we continue to become more and more miserable. So what is the answer for that? What can we do to not only continue to find our partner desirable, but also, in a sense, um, rekindle who we were that our partner was attracted to or grow in such a way that we reignite that passion in them and we do this by continuing to heal and grow so the importance of healing shouldn't be understated because I feel like a lot of times people lose themselves excuse me in relationships when they're trying to, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to take a drink because my throat just got really dry. People will often lose themselves in their relationships. <coughs> excuse me. Sometimes when you do a live outside, you take chances of allergies kicking in. So we lose ourselves in relationships when we lose ourself, or sorry, we lose our, our uh, partner's um, attraction and interest and desire in us when we lose ourselves. Because what are they attracted to then? <coughs> We can also do this in the context of um, parents, parenting. We lose ourselves in our role as a mother, and it becomes our identity. And, you know, that in itself can make a person appear less desirable. And I don't mean that to say that as a mother you shouldn't give your children all of the love and attention that they deserve and need. Um, but oftentimes, or sometimes what happens is when we do that, we also shift our affection and attention away from our spouse and away from ourselves. And so if we put all of it into one bucket and then leave the other buckets empty, it's no wonder when we, you know, can finally pop our heads up and breathe after we've you know, there's, there's a period of time when you're raising children when it's expected that you know, in the crunch of it, that couples will lose a little bit of their uh, connectedness and whatnot, and it becomes harder to maintain that connection. That's perfectly understandable. It's an incredibly busy, stressful, um, you know, time-consuming endeavor. And so it's important to try to keep a sense of yourself with even within that time period because when you come out the other side and your children are starting to be more independent and, and sort of moving away from needing you as much the the emptiness that can come from having that that bucket be completely removed and now you're just looking at two empty buckets so we've all seen 
seen and heard of the couples, you know, raised their children, and now they're at a point where maybe they're empty nesters even, and they're sitting across the table from each other without anything to say. And so this is why I feel like it's so important to keep your authentic authenticity and keep your connection to yourself and to your values and to your dreams and your needs and wants. Because at the end of the day, when we sit down with our spouse, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to share? And if it's all mundane and it's all just the everyday stuff, then that gets really, really boring. And, you know, what keeps a relationship alive is excitement, fun, and we can't do that every single day. We can't live in that way. However, there's different ways to have excitement and joy and fun in our relationships that don't cost anything. You know, sending a little note to your spouse, um, you know, via text, telling them how much you appreciate something that they did for you or how you loved seeing them when they were in the role of, you know, maybe, maybe seeing them in the role of parent is actually really um, inspiring to you and maybe that's something that makes them seem desirable. But the thing is, is we need to have our own interests, our own passions, our own things that us because that's the fuel that we bring to the relationship. We bring ourselves to the relationship. And when we lose ourselves, we, we can lose the relationship, right? So I hope this makes sense. Um, you know, just to put it in perspective, there's lots of things that I do that my husband has zero interest. And there's lots of things that I'm passionate about and that I talk about. Um, really, burned inside of me and you know if if he didn't really care about who I was then he wouldn't be engaged with me I'm trying to talk about these things but the difference between sort of like not really being engaged and actually being uh, you know excited for your um, helps you to get closer to each other, understanding what fuels their needs and what really, you know, gets them fired up in the morning, help you be a better partner, right? So the same you know, goes for it in verse. If we show up for ourselves, we're better able to show up for people in our lives. We're better able to maintain sense of self within the relationship. So I hope this makes sense. I hope it helps. Um, and I hope you're all having a fantastic day. And uh, if you're watching later, I'd love for you to comment and let me know what you think. And um, if you've found that to be true for yourself, right? So, um, just, you know, one point to make before I log off is one of the that most uh, admirable or have the most action for in my life, a couple that really, really understands the need for smartness and togetherness and finding that balance. And they're able to maintain their own interests and hobbies and friend groups. And then, they, you know, have a time where they voted specifically do special things with their kids, and then times that they vote to each other. And they really work hard at achieving about, and, you know, they're struggling sometimes to do all of that. Of course, they have really young kids, right? So, but the intention that they bring to it, I think, is really, really admirable. And so, people like in your life who inspire you through their relationship, through the, the as well as the type within their relationship and see what they do. Like what practices do they have within their relationship that you know make them strong. And I think you'll see the most healthy relationships in space for me.
Thanks for joining. I'm actually finishing up, so uh, you know, feel free to go back and watch it later. And let me know what you think. But just talk about how important it is to maintain your sense of health, and sometimes that takes therapy, and sometimes it takes mindful practices, meditation practices, and the shadow work, and doing all the work to be happy, be yourself, be autonomous, but within that relationship. And I, I find that you're able to get closer to balance, place, you know, place for me, there's a place for you, a place for us, that I think that you find that I want to keep that desire going with relationship. I hope this was helpful for joining. Have a good day.